Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Brody Precision. In this video, we are continuing our Niagara Basics series, and we're going to actually be opening up the software and taking a look at how everything is laid out and the important bits and uh, looking at some pieces that maybe you might want to tweak in your options to make things a little bit more comfortable for you. So without further ado, let's jump into Niagara now and get started. All right, so I've got Niagara open now. Uh, if you don't have Niagara open and you don't know how to do it, you're just going to go to your start menu, go to all, and then find the particular version that you're using. One thing with Niagara is that you will have a bunch of different individual versions. It's not one software package that has a version selector or something like that. You will have different versions when you're out in the field. You will have different versions because different sites will be at different versions. So scroll down until you find the particular version that you're trying to run. These uh, folder names may be different depending on the brand that you're you're using so in my case I'm just using the latest and greatest Niagara 415 open up that folder and then in my case I'm gonna just run the application here and that's what we've got on the screen at the same time you'll also want to run the platform daemon if you're going to be running stations locally on your machine that's sort of what kicks things off behind the scenes and lets that virtual server, for lack of a better word, run behind the scenes and lets you connect to that platform so that you can get in and do what you need to do. But that's for a different video. Now we have the software open, so we're going to take a deeper look at the individual parts of the software. So as you would expect, this is a normal you know, Windows application. You've got your toolbar here at the top, and you've got your menu bar where you can select a bunch of different menus. You can do open to open up your stations and open up your platforms. Um, but very often you'll be just doing that from this uh, open button on the uh, toolbar here. You'll open that up and do an open station or open platform. And then you've got the ability to do new tabs, um, modern applications. So you have that ability. And then uh, you can go back and forth and uh, open up your recent ORDs. This is going to be the recent locations that you've been to. Help, very helpful uh, depending on uh, what you're doing and if you're connecting to different parts of a station to modify different things and you're going back and forth. Uh, very good to know. And then next you've got your refresh uh, as you would expect. If you need to refresh a page, it's going to be Alt-R, not the Control-R that you might be used to. And then you can log off if you're connected to a station, close the window, and exit uh, Workbench altogether if you need to. Edit, you've got the basics uh, that you would expect in here. Cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, rename, delete, duplicate, all of the, the stuff that you would expect. Search if you're using text files or uh, looking at uh, text views of something like a PX graphic file or something like that. You have those uh, abilities to search through and find and replace the uh, text file if you need to. Bookmarks, this function is exactly like you'd expect. You can set uh, bookmarks to particular sites or locations or locations in sites if you needed to have quick access to them at some point in the future. Tools is where things get a little bit more complicated. You'll see there's a whole bunch going on here. There are a couple in here that you're going to use a lot. Um, you've got this new station dialog here at the very bottom. This is where you're going to create a station if you're building a job um, from scratch, not using a uh, pre-canned uh, station that you might have in your library or grabbing one from somewhere else. This is where you would create a new station. Again, that'll be a future video, uh, but that option is up here under tools and then you've got a whole bunch of other stuff that we'll dig into uh, more depth on here in the future but for now we'll just go into options and look at the options here there are a couple that I uh, have some thoughts on and you might want to change for yourself mainly uh, what I find myself going into is going to be the general and the PX editor sections you have a bunch of other options in here to modify things if you really need to, but typically you're only going to be in general and PX editor in my experience. Time format, if you have a specific kind of time display that you like, uh, depending on where you are in the world, uh, you might have something different that you want to see. You can set that here. Unit conversion, I don't recommend touching it. Uh, 
you may think that you want to set this to English or metric if you're uh, in Europe or somewhere else outside of America. Um, but I don't recommend it because it can throw you off when you're actually programming and working on a job because your station or your uh, workbench is going to be doing the unit conversion locally and make you think that your points actually have the correct values when they really don't. Uh, and then you'll go log in from somewhere else and you'll see the wrong units and you'll get confused as to what's going on. I don't recommend setting that unit conversion. Just leave it at none. Um, auto log, log off. Uh, if you wanted to auto log off of stations that you log into from Workbench, you can do that here uh, automatically. That's also set in the station itself on the user's side, but you can set it on the Workbench side here as well. You can change your font size if you need a larger font. You can do that. You have the ability to change between a couple different themes. Depending on the brand of Workbench that you're using, this may be a different default theme. Typically, uh, brands or OEMs that are, are doing um, Niagara-based things like Honeywell, Johnson Controls, etc., they will have a specific theme that uses kind of their colors and things for their brand. You can change this uh, to be whatever you like, whatever you prefer. That option is set for you here. And then user credential caching, you just leave that as the default. And then the locale, because I'm in the U.S. and I speak English, that we're going to leave as the default as well. Then we go to our PX editor. Um, we'll touch on this more in the future uh, when we get into PX and graphic work, but this is where you set all of the um, settings for your PX editor when you're going in and changing and doing things. Since we're here, uh, we may as well make one change that I like to do, and that is change my snap size to 5 instead of 10 on this uh, setting and basically what that lets you do is move your graphics around in smaller increments when you're uh, building out a graphic instead of using uh, 10 which I find is tends to be a little bit too large of a step when you're using like the arrow keys to move an object around on the screen so uh, we set that to 5 um, we've got uh, the ability to change the way the grid shows up on that and the color and if it snaps and all of that kind of stuff. Um, again, we'll dig into that further as we get into uh, building out graphics. So we'll hit OK here. And then we have uh, our window drop down in the menu bar. Here we can choose our sidebars. This is an important one to know because by default, all we're getting in the sidebar, which is this left-hand portion of the screen, is our nav. What you will often need as well is your palette. This is where you're going to grab things from different um, modules that are in your stations. So if you're doing backnet work, you will probably need the backnet driver uh, module. If you're doing graphics, you'll need the PX, or excuse me, kit PX and PX graphics and that kind of thing. You will need this palette uh, for your usage in the future. So uh, it's good to have that open. Another one that is uh, helpful to have up as you're doing more and more work in your stations is the jobs palette. Uh, when your station is doing work or you're telling your station to do work, this is where uh, you will get status on whether or not that job is completed. If you're doing something like a backup um, or you're doing a commission, um, that kind of thing you'll see in your jobs uh, sidebar here. And I think that's, a, that's the majority of things that you're going to want to touch in here. As always with anything software related, I'm a big fan of just like play with it, um, turn things on, turn things off, move things around, and uh, you'll learn more as you do that. So we'll leave this as it is. Another thing that may be helpful for you if you're a little bit more developer-y or you want to dig in a little bit deeper, you can turn on the console, which adds the console at the very bottom here. But for the average user, you're never going to need that. So we'll hide it. Another thing to know is your help. Uh, there is a lot of good documentation in the help. I don't typically reference the help from this uh, drop-down menu, though. I'll show you another way to get to it here in a moment that is a lot more, 
a lot more flexible and uh, direct with getting the information that you exactly need instead of ha having to search for it. So that is everything from our menu bars. Then we get to the toolbar. This is sort of, again, giving us this kind of the same information, but just in a different um, display. We got icons for it now instead of being specific text. So we've got our back, forward, go up a level. We've got our sidebars so we can turn things off here directly instead of having to go up into our window. We've got our recent orgs. We can click that link. We can go back to the home. We can refresh a page, uh, refresh all of our pages, get more information on things, open up a station if we needed to, save uh, save our file, which uh, we'll get into in a future video. If you're working directly on a config.bog, that's what you're going to need. Passphrase management will be the next one. If we want to um, export a specific thing, we can do that here. Then we get our cut, copy, paste, duplicate, undo, redo, find, all of that jazz. Um, you will notice that if you mouse over an icon, just leave your mouse there for a moment. You'll get the tooltip. So if you're ever questioning what something is, just mouse your, uh, put your mouse over top of it and you will get the information that you need. Then we get into our sidebar. We sort of already covered that, but the main piece that you're going to be living in in the sidebar is your nav, and that is how you uh, navigate your station and navigate to different stations uh, throughout uh, Workbench and your life in Workbench. It's not super intu intuitive when you first uh, open up Workbench for the first time. I remember this being something where I was like, I don't where, where's the actual functionality of the software? I don't understand. Uh, to get the, the functionality of the software, you're going to right-click and do an open platform or an open station and actually dive into the station or the platform that the station is running on uh, by doing one of those opens. So it's not uncommon to see uh, this nav uh, totally full of different locations for different JSES or different supervisors um, as you are using the software more and more. You do have the ability to build out a folder in here, which is what you'll get in this drop down here. So I can do a new folder, I can give it a name, uh, we'll call this test, and you can change the icon if you need to, um, and we'll say okay. And then we get into our options here on the nav. Uh, first one is gonna be a new folder. Uh, then we've got the ability to reorder things in the tree if we needed to, refresh the tree so that we get the latest updates. Sometimes your tree will get out of sync from what's actually out in the field, so that's a good one to know about. And then we have the ability to um, have different um, options for our areas that we're looking at. So they call it networks kind of here, um, but we can drop this down so we could have a specific site that has a whole bunch of network connections or net, um, JSEs and supervisors that we're connecting to independently. We could have that organized here uh, in the drop down if we needed to. And then we get to our main pane here. It doesn't really have a name. Uh, I guess you could call it the viewer if you wanted to. Um, and that is this section here. You will find that depending on where you're navigating to in Niagara, you will have multiple views on that particular object. And to access those views, you can hit this drop down in the top right to get to them. Um, this is like sort of a web page that we're sort of looking at here for the splash screen. So we've got a bunch of different um, editors that may be helpful for that kind of page. And then next to our drop down, this is not super intuitive in my opinion, but this is actually a sort of a URL uh, field where we could punch in a location that we want to go to or on your keyboard you can hit command or excuse me control L and you can get this same thing and then punch in the URL that you want to go to or if you needed the URL for or the ORD as it's called in Niagara of where you are, uh, control L will get you this pop out, which will show you exactly where you are um, in your station or in your platform, or in this case, within my Workbench install. So I think that's about it for the overall uh, Workbench uh, general user interface. Uh, sort of glancing over everything, the bits and pieces here, we'll delve into individual parts as we uh, look at different features. Um, 
whatever might be needed to be tweaked or explained further. We'll get to those as we're doing things in the future. So thanks as always for watching. If there's a specific part of Niagara that you're questioning that you want to see in more depth, you can leave those in the comments down below. If you want to purchase Niagara uh, or you want to get into this world in more depth, uh, be sure to check us out at birdieprecision.com. And if you're interested in purchasing something, you can email us at sales at birdieprecision.com. And we are more than, happy, more than happy to help you out. Thanks as always for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.